If I or any other surgeon were practicing in the back of the universe, we would definitely have our hands full. <laughs> Did he actually just rip a guy's face off? Listen up everybody, I have some news. Back. Spec versus Hanayama. Today, I'm analyzing one of the most ludicrous fight scenes from the anime series Baki, a show where the world's most deadly fighters clash in no rules hand-to-hand -hand combat. Each fighter has their own unique fighting style, and when they go toe-to-toe, -to -toe, you never know what to expect. This show is not for the faint of heart. I repeat, this show is not for the faint of heart. Today's patients are Karu Hanayama, who is known to be the strongest Yakuza boss in Japan, and one of the more powerful fighters in the series. He's the one with the tattoo on his back. And Spec, who is a brutal serial killer with a psychotic sense of humor and a love for weapons. You know, the guy swinging an iron frame park bench like a baseball bat. <laughs> yes, for the duration of the video, you'll have to suspend your disbelief. These fighters are many times stronger than your average human being, and as you will see, more durable as well. We have to consider the sheer incredulity of this attack. Here, Spec shoves a handful of bullets into Hanayama's mouth and slams his mouth shut to set these bullets off. The bullets go off in his mouth all at the same time. Now, normally, you would expect this not only to injure Hanayama as the bullets were discharged, but likely also Spec as well, since the bullets were shoved in Hanayama's mouth in a random fashion. At any rate, here only Hanayama was injured. Now, aside from the fact that you would not be able to have the bullets go off in the manner shown, like it's just not technically possible, magically, none of the bullets seemed to travel in the direction of the throat or the pharynx. Had they done so, we would expect to see penetration of the pharynx and potentially the esophagus behind it as well. Either one of these injuries would be quite serious and potentially fatal. Either could cause significant hemorrhage into the pharynx or esophagus and would likely result in death if not treated with exploratory surgery and repair in a timely manner. If not immediately lethal, Hanayama would suffer from terrible infection, both localized and widespread. But all of that aside, we can see that while Hanayama survives this crazy attack, both of his cheeks have been utterly destroyed by the discharge of the bullets, leaving the entirety of the inside of Hanayama's mouth exposed to the outside environment. Interestingly, though the cheek tissue has been blown or burnt away, none of Hanayama's teeth has been damaged or blown out by the blast. Talk about superhuman. In addition to the injuries already listed, we could expect severe burns to the inside of Hanayama's mouth. With the immense pressure associated with the discharge of the bullets, we might even expect to see high pressure injuries of the oral cavity, the trachea and the esophagus, the lungs, and even the ears. Suffice it to say that this particular attack would be very, very problematic if not outright fatal. And yet, Hanayama is still able to stand and continues to fight. Even Spec is caught off guard, letting out a surprise cry as he sustains a crushing blow to the bridge of his nose that launches him into the nearby street lamp some 10 feet off the freaking ground. Hanayama punches Spec in the face with such force that Spec's face literally crumples as it caves in. This would cause fractures of the jaw, mandible, the face, maxilla, and likely the nasal bridge. If struck with the force that was demonstrated here, we might even expect the bones of the face to penetrate the frontal sinuses and the brain case. For a normal person, this would certainly be a devastating injury that would result in extensive facial trauma. But this isn't even the end of it. As if to add insult to injury, Spec is literally electrocuted by the street lamp into which Hanayama launched. Yeah. Depending on the point of contact with the lamp and the path that the electrical current traveled within his body, we would expect that Spec would have a series of second and third degree burns at one or more locations. And he might also have significant contracture of muscles that were along the path of the current. And then of course, there is the fall from a height of approximately 10 feet while 
unconscious. A reduced level of consciousness while falling to the ground would leave Speck unable to protect his head or neck once he struck the ground. To be honest, Speck would be all kinds of jacked up. He would be in no shape to do much of anything after this. All of these injuries would make a direct trip to the hospital an absolute necessity. But Hanayama is having none of it. Speck seems incapacitated when Hanayama delivers him to a nearby police station. But as I said before, these fighters are many times more durable than your average human being. Yes, that spec deadlifting Hanayama's vehicle. He was able to escape the police station and chase down the car with enough strength left over to lift and flip it with relative ease. This would require phenomenal grip strength, great lat strength, and very powerful legs. The heaviest deadlift on record was achieved by Half Thor Bjornsson, the mountain at slightly more than 1,000 pounds. This is only half the weight of even a small car. So this makes Spec superhumanly strong after he has had his face smashed and he has been electrocuted. This feat would be amazing in a normal situation, but after his injuries, it is even more astounding. Suspension of disbelief is one thing, but this is on another level. As if to return the favor of his own beating, Speck strikes Hanayama several times in the side of the head with a baton. We could expect severe facial trauma with fractures of the maxilla and mandible. However, with the blows striking from the side, we might also expect a fracture of the zygomatic complex near the temple and the skull itself. Of course, with any injury to the skull, we might also expect a closed head injury such as a concussion if mild or an intracranial bleed if more severe. But then Speck elevates his attack to the next level. He uses a small caliber handgun to shoot Hanayama at close range in each of his four major extremity joints, the knees, and the elbows. Ballistic injuries to the joints would cause open fractures of the affected joints with severe damage to the articular joint surfaces. These injuries would be predisposed to infection, delayed healing, and arthritis, assuming that they could even be fixed. If not, they could lead to permanent pain and disfigurement, and if problematic enough, even amputation of the affected extremities. In the normal person, were they to survive such an attack, it would be highly unlikely that they would be fortunate enough to retain normal function of any one of the involved extremities, let alone all four. And for his coup de grace, Speck curb stomps Hanayama's head on the ground while he is holding it suspended above the pavement. Not only would you get the actual impact of the head from Speck's foot, but you would also get the secondary impact of Hanayama's head on the pavement. With the coup and the subsequent contra coup injuries, this is like getting four blows for the price of one. Utterly savage and truly debilitating for the average person. Worsening of the skull fracture started with the baton attack earlier and possibly even a cervical spine injury from the suspended stomp would be the likely injuries here. If the skull fractures were severe enough, you might also expect to see exposed brain matter as if all of that wasn't enough. But just when you thought it couldn't get worse, Speck then puts the barrel of the pistol in Hanayama's mouth and good luck. pulls the trigger. Yet another gunshot injury to the oral cavity at point blank range. Absolutely ridiculous. And even with my disbelief suspended into low earth orbit, utterly over the top. Fortunately, Hanayama was able to turn his head at the last moment so that the barrel was pointing outside of his mouth through the hole created by the previous intraoral explosion. He would still suffer quite bad burns from the muzzle blast, but at least this would possibly be survivable. The tides of the battle turn again in Hanayama's favor until Speck pulls a flashbang grenade out of thin air and wrestles his stunned opponent into a rear naked choke. Naturally, Hanayama rips Speck's arm apart. 
わざとは呼べんでしょう。そりゃ痛かったでしょうね。Now, I am not entirely sure about the level of grip strength that is required to rip open a person's arm and literally peel the muscle off the bone like a banana peel. But whatever it is, it's a lot. I would venture to guess that it is in the range of a few hundred pounds per square inch. To be honest, I'm not even sure that the world's strongest deadlifters could even pull off this feat. And with them lifting over a thousand pounds, their grip strength is otherworldly. But not out of the fight yet, Spec retaliates with a special move of his own. Here, Spec jams his middle finger. Into Hanayama's ear. He literally buries the finger almost three inches to the level of the proximal interphalangeal joint. Both the width and the length of the finger inserted into Hanayama's ear would ensure that his auditory canal would suffer extensive damage and laceration. The organs of his inner ear would also be in the path of the digital destruction, so it is likely that Hanayama would become deaf on that side. What? In addition, the brain tissue is less than two inches away from the outer ear at this level. So, this type of probing would definitely result in the finger penetrating brain tissue. Kind of like the Q tip thing. At this level, the structures of the brain stem and cerebellum would be affected. So, normally, we would expect Hanayama's most basic brain functions breathing, heart rate, sleeping, eating, and motor movement to be disrupted by this injury. And in all likelihood, For the average human, this would result in death. But as we've already seen, Hanayama's grip strength is not to be trifled with. Due to the placement of his hand on Speck's body and the fact that Speck is defeated afterwards, we can assume that Hanayama did not suffer a significant brain injury from this technique as he is able to remain standing while he simultaneously crushes Spec's trachea with a single massive hand. While Spec had already survived a number of attacks from Hanayama, this attack on his trachea would severely affect his ability to breathe. And without adequate ventilation, Spec's level of consciousness would decrease. In other words, Spec would be going night night. You have to go night night nigga. You have to go night night nigga. Possibly even permanently. Fortunately for Spec, he is attended to by medical personnel quick enough that he survives long enough to be placed on life support. <gasps> Sounds like a vacation, doesn't it? Now, initially, I had intended to do a Baki compilation, but after watching a few episodes, I realized just how much ground there is to cover. So, if you've seen the series, what injuries would you like to see me analyze next? Thanks for watching. I will see you for rounds next week. And as always, that's been a word from Dr. Chris, not your everyday ortho. Just a flesh wound.